This is Map Musings. In today's episode, we're going to look at doggos around the world, a boom town through panoramic maps, who owns what in Oregon, and Finland if it was water? Do I need to wear mucklucks for this? Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps? You're tuned into Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. This nifty map is showing us the oldest college slash university in each state. So as an example, if we looked at Arkansas, we'd see the oldest university is the University of the Ozarks, formed in 1834. The oldest overall university in the United States, according to this map, is in Massachusetts, Harvard University, which was formed in 1636. The newest oldest college is the University of Alaska Fairbanks, which was formed in 1917. I'll now have the camera slowly pan down so you can see every single state and its oldest college. The American Cheese Society holds an annual competition for the best tasting cheese in the United States. Each one of these US counties listed here on this map was a 2022 winner for best tasting cheese. Meaning a cheese creamery had a very creamy, sharp, or zesty cheese that won a big award. American Cheese Society, if you're watching this, I will happily be a judge for next year. This map of California shows us the geographic regions within the state, and overall I'd say it's pretty accurate. The transition zones are done fairly well with the Klamaths and the Shasta Cascade region tying into the Sacramento Valley and the wine country, the Bay Area San Joaquin Valley and the Central Coast is split up pretty well, as well as the eastern parts of the state with the Modoc Plateau, Sierra Nevadas, Mojave Desert, etc. SoCal, Inland Empire, no questions here, and then we just got San Diego. It's always just kind of doing its own thing. San Diego. I feel they almost should have just called this Southern California. Now, I don't know the year this map is representing, but it shows us vehicle ownership in Mexico. Vehicle ownership is highest in northern parts of Mexico and gets lower the further south you go, ranging from as high as upwards of 70% to as low as 20%. The Mexican state with the most vehicle ownership is Baja, California, at about 70%. Densely packed Mexico City is between 40 and 49%. On the side of this map, we have some other countries for comparison. Car ownership in the United States is at 91%, compared to India, which is 7.5%. Nieto Canaan, deep within Finland's Lapland region, is an artificial pond created as a tourist attraction. It's near the small resort town of Kitalia and was constructed in 1991. Obviously, it's shaped like Finland. After all these years, it's held up pretty well. And for good measure, here it is on a satellite image as well. This is a distorted map of the world showing us the location of where certain dogs came from. A lot of dogs came from Scotland, England, and Europe, which is why they're so big on this map compared to a lot of the Asian countries which didn't introduce as many dogs to the world. So for example, looking here, England gave us the Labrador Retriever, the Foxhound, the Bulldog, Sheepdog, and the Corgi. Germany gave us things like the Great Dane, Pomeranian, Doberman, the Poodle? I didn't know they gave us the poodle. I did expect the German Shepherd though. Belgium gave us the Bloodhound. In the United States, we created the Australian Shepherd? Ugh, at least there's one thing here I know. Mexico gave us the Chihuahua. No quiero taco, man. So if you like doggy woggies, you're gonna love this map. I will slowly pan around for a few seconds here before we move on to the next map. Dog don't mind. If you live in North America or much of South America, you know to call 911 for an emergency, but that isn't the case around the rest of the world. For example, most of Europe uses 112. Russia, depending on the region, has a ton of different numbers ranging from 100 to 107. Brazil ranges from 190 to 194. Northern Africa, you're typing in longer numbers, 1515, 1548, 1730. 
Australia's triple zero. So what this map is showing is the different emergency numbers around the world. And I must say, this is a very interesting map. For our panoramic map section today, we're going to do something a little bit differently and follow the history of Tacoma, Washington, and watch its growth through panoramic maps. So for some quick backstory here, the Northern Pacific Railroad was looking for a city to build its western terminus, and it narrowed it down between Seattle and Tacoma. It was announced on July 14th, 1873, that Tacoma would become the terminus. This first map is of Tacoma in 1878, before Washington even became a state. You can see that much of the land is still natural. Tacoma is more or less a small town with the lumber industry and a seaport. And it was actually called New Tacoma at the time, which was separate from another city in the area called Tacoma City. Later, they would merge. We're looking off towards the Tacoma Tidal Flats, which would later become the major seaport of the Port of Tacoma. Mount Rainier can be seen in the distance. And as you can see, this town is unspoiled. Just eight years prior, there were only 73 people, according to the U.S. Census, in Tacoma. Now a little time has passed and the year is 1884. New Tacoma and Tacoma City have merged to simply be called Tacoma. The panoramic map now flips looking from a more northerly position before to a more southerly position, showing the full grid and layout of the city about to be in its boom years. We can see here downtown Tacoma is starting to grow, but the port is very active, and off in the distance we can see the other community of Ruston, also along the waterfront. It is just now we're starting to see the beginning of the impact that the railroad terminus is making for Tacoma, because between the years of 1880 and 1890, the population would grow over 3,000%, from just over 1,000 people to over 36,000. We jump forward a few more years to 1890, and we see the city is exploding in growth. The downtown is really taking shape with new density popping up. The port itself is also expanded, taking over an area now known as the Theophos Waterway. We can also see now the grid system that once expanded to open land is now being filled in with residential and commercial buildings. Maritime activity has now extended non-stop from Tacoma all the way to Ruston, and the railroad has built a more permanent bridge over the Theophos Waterway. For the first first time in these panoramic maps, we can see some landmark buildings being showcased on the outside edges of the map. Our last map of Tacoma is from 1893, and now it's certain. The city is now a city. We can see mid-rise and skyscraper buildings popping up in the downtown area. Development is quickly filling up land that was once empty. We also see some of the first man-made attempts to control the tidal flats, as we see there is construction and roads down here. So that was pretty cool. We got to use panoramic maps to watch Tacoma, Washington through one of its early boom periods. We watched it turn from a village into a bustling seaport city. This 1915 geographical map of Crater Lake in Oregon is very detailed, and I thought it was worth looking at to appreciate it. We can also see if we zoom in that geographic regions and features are also labeled, as well as their elevation. As we zoom out of Crater Lake here, we can see who owns what land in the state of Oregon. So Crater Lake there is actually owned by the National Park Service. Much of the green on this map is owned by the U.S. Forest Service. The lighter purple is land owned by the BLM, or the Bureau of Land Management, and the yellow is tribal lands. Kind of interesting to see the state broken up this way by who owns it. Uncle Sam owns a lot of this land. Using economic data, this shows us which states were the best states to do business in in 2022. The dark blue is the top 10, while the deep red were the worst. So in the top 10, we saw Washington, Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Texas, Minnesota, Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, and Virginia. Now I know which states to start my napkin production company in. We're going to make the best napkins you've ever used. This map shows us an approximation of where different bears live in North America. We see polar bears in the far northern recesses, mixed in with some grizzly bears. In gray, we see a large swath of black bears across much of North America. And large parts of the U.S. don't have any type of bear. There you go. Very good map. Each colored shape is telling us how many people live in that colored shape. So that blue circle is 25% of the world's population. 50% of the world's population is in that green zone. And 75% of the world's population is in the red zone. 
The reason such a large percentage of the population can live in these zones is because of the mass amounts of people living in China and India specifically. And since we're talking about it, 2022 saw the very first population decline for China since 1961. Also in 2023, India will surpass China as being the most populated country on Earth. This map shows us on average the number of weeks you have off for summer break if you're a kid somewhere in Europe. So if you live in England or Germany or the Netherlands or Denmark, you only get six weeks off for summer. The lucky kids in Spain or most of Eastern Europe get 13 weeks off. Russians get 14 weeks off. In the United States, the average summer break is 9 to 12 weeks, just for reference. This map shows us the United States with all of its rivers and tributaries. Up north here in green around the Great Lakes, we have the Great Lakes Basin. This massive pink region is mostly tied to the Mississippi and Missouri rivers as it flows out through Louisiana. The bluer blue here is the Rio Grande River Basin as it flows out to the Gulf of Mexico. This yellow area is the upper and lower Colorado River Basin. This turquoise teal is both the Sacramento River to the north and the San Joaquin River to the south, which both flow into the Bay Area. This orange region here in the Pacific Northwest are all the tributaries that flow into the Columbia River, such as the Palouse, the Snake, Spokane, the Yakima, Okanagan, Willamette, Cowlitz, etc. For scale, here are a few smaller ones, such as the Alabama River here, or the Savannah River in this light blue, and here's New York's Hudson River. Pretty incredible map, I mean, we could go through every single one of these and it would take a lot of time, but those were pretty much the big ones. Thanks for watching Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and those were the maps. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We also have a Patreon which you can support. In the future, when we get Patreon supporters, they will be shown here. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. I wonder if that's an error. It says San Francisco has no bears.